Well, we hope you enjoy the show. Now, on paper, it certainly looks as though it will be an interesting game. Hi, everybody. I just can't wait for things to get underway. The expectation is killing me. There's such a difference between the level of the two teams. You've got to be slightly worried. I've heard of teams that have simply disappeared after being abandoned by their supporters. Let's say that some teams who haven't won a match for several years have been tied up by their fans and thrown into rubbish containers. It's the only way to end a downward spiral. The ball's in play. The ball is in his hands. Did you know that vampire teams have experimented with using vials and flasks to satisfy the need for blood on the pitch? But it has always ended in failure, as there is always a block or tackle that sends the container crashing to the ground. That's right, Jim. I remember back in 2481, when the Gregan Counts faced off against the Dark Forest Iron Hoover. The match was abandoned when the Minotaurs and the Vampires spent the entire second half trying to drink the blood that was spilt over the pitch! Oh, I remember that match well, Bob. Mmm. That's why they started to field thralls instead. <laughs> Living containers! <laughs> And stop. What a sissy! That one can't hold the ground! Ah! The vampires! 
At last! A team with class! Not that you're biased, being a vampire and all! Not at all! Fans, they're red hot. A majority of supporters reckon that the league should take measures to prevent the small minority of peaceful fans from watching a match from the terraces. They've got a point. If they don't want to join in the fun, they might as well stay home and watch it on cable vision. As soon as he throws his first punch. We know the opponent will be out for lunch. Did you hear about the evil Gits? The team that is made up of the mix of evil players? Their fans won the most evil supporters of the year award. Fully merited from what I've seen. Ball taken with consummate ease. He's very good uh, with the ball, I mean.
Blood Bowl is reputedly the toughest of all sports. Ah, uh, so they say. But it really only comes down to taking a few hits. Reminds me of when I took Griff to bits in the 91 final against Reitland. Oh, yeah. You kneecapped him. Today's insight comes from Heine Schnivel, coach and owner of the Goblin Lowdown Rats team. In yesterday's Spike magazine, he said that Blood Bowl was like war. No winners, just survivors. Oh, now that's deep. About as deep as his team's position in the rankings. like there was some bad blood between those two, eh, Bob? Yeah, Jim. Something to do with swapped body parts. to say. And I don't have any remark to add, my friend. That pass would have done justice to a dwarf with mittens. Why do you always insult the dwarf? for some high-quality Blood Bowl gameplay. If you call fondling thralls and neck-biting as high-quality gameplay, then yes. But not all of us are into that sort of thing, Jim. Oh, really, Bob? As if propelling snotlings downfield is any different. Mm, yeah, Jim. Sure is different to me. More blood on the pitch to start with. Hmm, that's right, Bob. The pitch is no place to lie down for a sleep. Well, after an uppercut like that, he doesn't have any choice. And don't forget, children, don't try and do this at home. Remember, these are seasoned professionals. Well, one of them is anyway.
Jim, I have a question for you. Which team was crowned the worst team ever in the Spike magazine? The Streisand Vampires. That's right, Jim, and they all got sticked by their fans. That's all true, Bob, but they re-emerged last year with a new vampire lord, Bracul von Streisand, and they were quickly voted Rookie Team to Watch. Vampire teams do suck. Blood, of course. Hey, Bob? Yeah, Jim, we can agree that they are not the greatest teams out there. Well, Bob, they do have a huge disadvantage. I mean, all that blood sucking and all. Apparently, they tried to catch the ball and stand on it at the same time. And failed at both. Side kick to the face. Let's see that again in slow motion. The player has got the ball, and now he's the main target. Jim, I have a question for you. Which team was crowned the worst team ever in the Spike magazine? The Streisand Vampires. That's right, Jim, and they all got sticked by their fans. That's all true, Bob, but they re-emerged last year with a new vampire lord, Bracul von Streisand, and they were quickly voted Rookie Team to Watch.
know that vampire teams have experimented with using vials and flasks to satisfy the need for blood on the pitch. But it has always ended in failure, as there is always a block or tackle that sends the container crashing to the ground. That's right, Jim. I remember back in 2481, when the Gregan Counts faced off against the Dark Forest Iron Hoover. The match was abandoned when the Minotaurs and the Vampires spent the entire second half trying to drink the blood that was spilt over the pitch! Oh, I remember that match well, Bob. Mmm. That's why they started to field thralls instead. <laughs> <laughs> Living containers! <laughs> One way to look at things. I doubt he'll be taking any further part in the match after that. No, no, we still got two legs. Incoming! Well, it is a violent sport. He didn't react fast enough there. No. To be effective, you've got to get your retaliation in first. <laughs> there was a time when the Colleges of Magic hadn't yet ruled on limiting wizard assistance to teams. Who could forget the infamous 2472 Quagmire incident, when rampant spellcasting caused the entire Bright Crusader Stadium to sink into the earth? Nobody could forget that. People were blinded for miles around the stadium. A recent medical report stated that cerebral hemorrhages were less frequent in Blood Bowl players. Amazing when you come to thinking. Not really, when you consider that brains are also less frequent.
Wizards have not always been able to cast spells safely from behind the sidelines. Were you playing at the time in an Albion League, a second division that prohibited spell casting from off the pitch? Oh, yes. They were great times. I remember fans traveling to games just to see how well Wizards stood up to the mad charge of a raving Blood Bowl star. The noise created by a sizzling fireball followed by the characteristic sound of the snapping of a wizard's neck. Blood will never clot if he keeps running around like that. What violence! Yes! It's a great spectacle, Bob! Ah! The vampires! At last! A team with class! Not that you're biased, being a vampire and all! Not at all! The bench seems to be in two minds about what to do about the player lying prone on the pitch. Yeah, they don't know whether to send on a stretcher or a coffin. teams are not the best Blood Bowl teams out there. I am a proud ogre, Jim. And don't make me call my buddy Morgan Thorg. I am just saying, Bob, that not many ogre teams win their matches at the Snotlings. Ah, oh, well, never mind. I thought we were friends. Oh, oh what a baby.
Did you know that the Borderland Brutes are one of the few ogre teams that take the throwing game seriously? Much to the fans' delight, Jim. I am not saying that they are good at it, Bob, but at least they're trying. And remember, fans, as long as you try your hardest, that's all that counts. <laughs> <laughs> not... We don't see much of the Heroes of Law these days. I don't know. For any spectators who aren't aware, the Heroes of Law hope to show the world a better way by honest, strategic play on the pitch. It's probably a good thing we don't see them. If he hit him any harder, he'd have punched him straight into the infirmary. Uh, don't worry, that's where he'll be waking up. Every 
now and again, Blood Bowl throws up a real mixed bag of the team. Like the Motley Horde is made up of a bunch of misfits. Yeah, can't be easy to coach those cast-offs every day of the week. Rebuild their stocks of missiles! <laughs> 